Hey, what's up guys? This is John Spear with Warhammer. Hope you guys are having a great day. Uh, excuse the noise, I am top of the roof with a bunch of animals behind me. So, there's that, you know. Um, Alright, so what today, what we're doing today is we're going to be troubleshooting a unit. The report was that it was uh, it popped the breaker last night. And uh, all it's doing is quote unquote running. So we're... We're just coming out here. We reset the breaker, so we're just gonna check a couple of things. It's playing catch up right now. So what it's doing is actually just, uh, as you could hear it, probably in the background. Yo, know, this this sucker's running at max capacity. So what we're gonna do is try a few different things. The the troubleshoot this to make sure everything's up to code and it's very proper and. The, the install was done correctly. All right, so here we go. We'll just jump right into it. As you can see, the fan is going at a million miles an hour. It is going, doing its thing. Uh, we got a Siemens 60 amp, 600 volts, um, horsepower rated, right? So it's meant for a motor. Um, the 600 volt means it can handle up to, you know, handle our stuff of 480, right? Because we typically work with 12208, 12240, or 277, 480. Um, this is a heavy duty, meaning 600 volt. There's that. It's a NEMA 3R, so that's done correctly. You can always tell because it always got the little cap on top. Um, so, so far, that's what we're working with right there it's a fusible unit so anything with the motor it has a fuse so we'll go down here and check this out because this is the important part of what we're looking for so this is the nameplate on this nameplate it'll tell you a few different things that you need to know before you start troubleshooting one what voltage is this this is 480 uh, it says two or 460 but you know, we work with 277, 480. So, what does that mean for us? It, this thing's got a voltage range. So it can range between the minimum of 414 or the maximum of 506. Meaning, if it ranges between those two numbers, this thing will operate, it will turn on, it will do everything it needs to do if it's in between those two numbers. All right, so next one is the max fuse or the max breaker, whatever is closer, right? So nine times out of 10, you have a disconnect and it's a fusible, right? So it's saying this thing's gotta be 35 amps to operate. All right, so there's two things we need to check. One, the fuses on this disconnect up here are 35 amps to check the circuit breaker to make sure that it's accommodating that particular number um, these numbers really don't fucking matter to us we don't care about it it's not part of our troubleshooting shit um, the minimum circuit amps that this thing needs is 22 meaning the wire size has to be at least, you guessed it, like a number 10, number uh, number 12 if it's close, number 10 if it's far. Um, given I know where the panel is, uh, these should be a minimum of 10. You know, but if it's eight, that's great. All right. So, troubleshooting a disconnect, right? How are you going to, you know, check this thing out while it's on, whatever, without turning it off? Because you want the motor to be running while you're testing this thing. So, how to open this up? You grab a flathead screwdriver, okay? Just normal flathead screwdriver. You see this little hinge? Boom. You popped it open. It's still not going to open up. So, what you do is you stick it right here in this little crevice. Boom, opens right up. There you go. First thing we're gonna analyze is the install. 
looks great i don't see anything wrong with it so i love doing this this is great um i call them fuck up loops they are like just in case you need to move some stuff but this is a very efficient way of doing things they're number eight that's perfect what you saw in the minimum ampacity that's perfect that's what you need right because realistically they could have ran number 10s and been fine but we are running at this so that works out great they size it per the actual you know the fuses and everything so that's that's perfect that's what you need the fuse size is correct according to the nameplate so there is nothing wrong right here we'll do a couple little tests just to check it out so here's my meter it's a fluke 374 fc it is just the standard uh, electrician's meter so we're going to stick it on the amps portion that's going to read the clamp part if you can see right there in the corner it's reading the clamp so we got 12.6 on phase a 12.4 steady phase b 11.2 phase three all right nothing crazy nothing's over amping this thing's running 100 miles an hour so that's good news all great stuff next thing we need to check is the amp or the the voltage so we'll switch this guy to voltage now we're going to voltage good to go we checked it all right so i'm gonna pause the video and try to get this thing one-handed hold on so if you remember correctly we were supposed to get in between the numbers of 414 and 506 i got my leads on a and b we got 472 that is perfect we'll go to this one just to triple check 472 perfect in between the ranges no big deal this thing is done perfect nothing wrong here so now we'll go check the breaker size we're going to look for 20 22 24 based off of this description that the electrician left behind us matches this cu2 panel r so we'll go check that out next all right now we're over here at the panel so We'll check this thing out. All right, here we go. All right, so we got a NEMA 3R panel, 277, 480, four wire, three phase panel R. That's the one we're looking for. So let's open the sucker up. And our circuitry was 20, 22, 24, which is this guy. And it's 35 amps. So that means everything's good on the electrical side. Nothing wrong, nothing crazy to report. This is exactly what needs to happen. Um, all right. We've officially checked everything that we could as far as electrical. Um, it's not direct shorting or else that thing wouldn't run, right? So that's out of the pocket. Um, everything sized to the manufacturer's recommendations, that's good everything's voltage drop wise we're fine um, we check the amperages to make sure it's not overloading um, all good why this thing tripped it's probably mechanical um, but other than that that's how you take a look at an hvac unit when it starts popping you can go through those different steps that i went through with you guys and you can definitely check it out and make sure that it's everything that you guys need it to be um, but it's definitely going through the steps right and you kind of start you start at the problem and work your way back you know that's that's how i like to troubleshoot so if the problem is at the light you want to make sure that you work at the light and go backwards right um, some people say start in the middle but i say start at the problem work your way backwards kind of like a reverse detective right and that's kind of how you start troubleshooting stuff um you know the report i'm gonna have is i 
definitely checked out everything I possibly could as far as the amperages, the voltages, the nameplate size, and all that good stuff. And I'll probably show them this video if I'm being honest with you. And just show the different phases that I went through to go take a look at this. And it, it was very thorough, very comprehensive of everything that you need to know about that mechanical unit. Everything met within the ranges. So we are all good to go. Thank you guys for watching. Once again, my name is John Spear with Warhammer. Quick uh, shout out to, you know, Fluke. Um, the only product I trust with my life. So, you know, there's that. You guys have a great day. Once again, you know, be safe out there.